125, 125 feet, feet tall, 62, 62 miles per hour, hour. 4,536 4, feet, feet, feet long, and two and dueling, two tracks. dueling tracks. It was the, it tallest, was the tallest, the fastest, the fastest and, the and the longest roller coaster, roller coaster, in, the coaster in the world. It was the, it greatest, was the greatest roller coaster, roller coaster in the world. In the world. It, was it was Colossus. The city of Valencia, California is a bedroom community located approximately 30 miles northwest of downtown Los Angeles. Conceived by the Newhall Land and Farming Company in the early 1960s, it welcomed its very first resident in 1965. With its close proximity to Los Angeles and affordable housing, people were moving to Valencia in droves. In January 1969, a partnership was formed between Newhall Land and SeaWorld to build a traditional theme park for the residents of Valencia. 200 acres of hilly land was chosen right next to the brand new interstate, and the project was christened as Magic Mountain. Groundbreaking was held in January 1970, with a projected opening the following summer, a mere 17 months away. Magic Mountain opened its gate to the world on May 29, 1971, with 23 rides including two roller coasters, a family coaster called Gold Rusher, and a small kitty coaster called the Clown Coaster. In 1973, they added their third roller coaster, a Schwarzkopf Wildcat, called Mountain Express. In 1976, Magic Mountain turned the roller coaster community on its head, literally, by introducing the Great American Revolution, the world's first modern looping steel coaster. It was such a big hit that it ended up being the star in the 1977 major motion picture roller coaster. The park was now on the map and firmly on their way to roller coaster stardom upside down in an amusement park on many different types of rides is becoming the rule rather than the exception. <laughs> After building the world's most popular roller coaster, the park knew that their next coaster had to make an even bigger statement. They wasted no time and started to formulate a plan for their next coaster soon after the Great American Revolution opened in 1976. The park had identified a prime 10-acre piece of land that they wanted to build the new coaster on, which was in front of the parking lot and completely visible from the nearby interstate. They knew they wanted a wooden coaster and that they wanted it to be the world's largest. At the time, that record was held by Montaña Rusa, a 110 foot tall wooden coaster in Mexico City that had held the record since it was built in 1964. Magic Mountain even hired the same company that had built Montaña Rusa as they had established themselves as one of the premier wooden coaster builders in the world. The design work started in January 1977 and went through May, with physical construction beginning in August. The height was set at 125 feet tall, easily breaking the record with a figure 8 track configuration. To further emphasize the desire to have the world's biggest coaster, they opted to make it a racer, meaning there would be not one, but two tracks running in parallel with each other. There were some challenges during construction, including two separate heavy wind incidents that knocked down large sections of the structure that had to be rebuilt. However, there were no major setbacks that couldn't be overcome, and for the most part, construction went according to plan.
Colossus opened to much fanfare on June 29, 1978. Not only was the name appropriate, given the unprecedented size of the structure, but it was also quickly dubbed the greatest roller coaster in the world. When the tracks are laid, the final task is to test the trains using weights until they are ready for passengers. We'll take a ride on Colossus in just a moment. You know, we can talk all we want about size and expense, but the only way to find out just how good a roller coaster really is is to try it. So let's try this one. It's called Colossus. Please don't be afraid to scream. I mean, after all, that's what scream makers are for. By now, we've found out that nothing can make me scream. Nothing. Not even the highest, longest, fastest roller coaster in the whole. At 125 feet tall, the top of the Colossus lift hill was certified by the Guinness Book of World Records to be the world's tallest roller coaster. The first drop is 115 feet down. The top of the second hill is a big turnaround, lining you up for the second drop. Colossus was the first coaster in the world to feature two drops in excess of 100 feet, with the second drop being 105 feet down. The second drop leads into a zero-g floater hill, and then right up into a double up in the third hill turnaround. The third drop used to lead into a double down element, as seen here, however that was smoothed over in 1991, so a new block break could be added. The third and final turn leads into a small drop and a couple of small hills before you hit the final brakes and head back to the station. Colossus was closed in May 1979 to address growing reliability concerns. This was the exact same time that Six Flags was acquiring Magic Mountain. Since its opening the prior year, Colossus was closed for maintenance nearly half of the park's opening hours. Six Flags standard at the time was less than 5% downtime for all of their rides, and they wanted to ensure Colossus met that standard as well. Six Flags quickly went to work completely overhauling Colossus. 10 of the 14 hills were reprofiled to eliminate all negative g-force. Other changes included an all-new braking system with air-actuated sled-type brakes and variable speed drive motors on the lift hill, which allowed a quick ascent but slowed the train right as it reached the top of the hill. The last major change was all-new trains. The original trains, provided by international amusement devices, were very heavy and were starting to damage the track. The new trains, from Philadelphia Toboggan Company, or PTC, were much lighter, providing a smoother ride, less wear and tear on the track, and an increase of the top speed to 62 miles per hour. The entire overhaul of Colossus took six months and cost $2 million. The ride was reopened in December, just in time for the holiday celebration. In 1984, Six Flags turned the trains around on one side during their annual Halloween event, Fright Fest giving guests the option of riding Colossus facing forward or backwards. It was so popular that it became an annual tradition that continued until the day Colossus closed. In 1988, the PTC trains were retired and replaced by sleek, fiberglass, California-style trains by Morgan Manufacturing. These were the same trains that Colossus used until the day it closed. In June 2014, Six Flags Magic Mountain formally announced that Colossus, the king of wooden coasters, would be ending its 36-year run at the park in August. 
Since it had been such a prominent icon at the park for so long, they wanted to ensure that they gave everyone plenty of notice that it was going away so they could come ride it one more time. Colossus played a very prominent role as the Screamy Mimi roller coaster at the fictional Wally World theme park in the 1983 hit movie National Lampoon's Vacation. The park played off that notoriety by setting up farewell photo opportunities using props made famous by the movie, such as the family station wagon and the moose that announced the ride was closing. The park also set out one of the Colossus cars for people to sit in and have their pictures taken with a Colossus backdrop. Additionally, there was a special media day held to come and ride Colossus one final time, and an after-hours farewell party hosted by a local radio station. The biggest farewell event was a 36-hour marathon on Colossus. Hundreds of people applied, but only 24 lucky riders were chosen to participate. The event started at 9 o'clock a.m. and concluded at 9 o'clock p.m. the following day. The riders spent 45 minutes of every hour riding Colossus non-stop, with only 15 minutes to stretch, eat, or use the restroom. It may sound easy, but it was not. Only six riders, dubbed the Colossus Six, made it to the very end, riding Colossus a whopping 328 times in 36 hours. The last official day to ride Colossus was on August 16, 2014, which also just happened to be National Roller Coaster Day. It was a party atmosphere with balloons, a DJ providing entertainment, and lots of prizes being handed out. The line was long as everyone wanted to get in one final ride, but nobody was complaining. As a bonus, everyone who rode that day also received a special commemorative button to remember Colossus by. As a special thank you to its most loyal guests, Six Flags season pass holders were allowed to ride Colossus all day on August 17, 2014. A group of us roller coaster enthusiasts gathered to be on the very last public train ever. The park ushered us into the queue just as the park closed. I was the last person to enter, and a barricade was moved in front of the entrance behind me. No park guest would ever pass through that station to ride Colossus again. The park cycled our train twice, and just like that, it was over. No more Colossus. The true final riders of Colossus were actually the employees, as it should be. There was an after-hours event that night for the employees to get their final rides in. After tending to Colossus for 36 years, it was time for them to say their goodbyes. The very last Colossus ride ever was taken in complete silence. It was described as being very special and extremely moving. So, what's next for Colossus? The time for when it gave its last ride on August 17th until the corporate announcement was made on August 28th seemed like an eternity. However, now we know. Colossus will be reborn as Twisted Colossus. Colossus made its debut in 1978, it took the roller coaster world by storm. No coaster had ever been that big, or that fast. It may not have held onto the world records for long, no coasters ever do, but it definitely held onto people's hearts for decades. Colossus is the first big roller coaster that countless children have ridden for the very first time. People have met their soulmate, and even gotten married on Colossus. Whatever the reason, Colossus is special to many people, and it will be greatly missed. However, Twisted Colossus will continue to carry the same spirit, forging new memories with future generations for years to come.